a reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will provide for all peoples a feast of rich food and choice wines, juicy rich food and pure choice wines. On this mountain, he will destroy the veil that veils all peoples, the web that is woven over all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. The reproach of his people he will remove from the whole earth, for the Lord has spoken. On that day it will be said, Behold our God to whom we looked to save us. This is the Lord for whom we looked. Let us rejoice and be glad that he has saved us, for the hand of the Lord will rest on this mountain. The word of the Lord. I shall live in the house of the Lord all the days of my life. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. In verdant pastures he gives me repose. Beside restful waters he leads me, he refreshes my soul. He guides me in the right paths for his name's sake. Even though I walk in the dark valley, I fear no evil, for you are at my side with your rod and your staff that give me courage. You spread the table before me in the sight of my foes. You anoint my head with oil, my cup overflows. Only goodness and kindness will follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord for years to come. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus walked by the Sea of Galilee, went up on the mountain and sat down there. Great crowds came to him, having with them the lame, the blind, the deformed, the mute, and many others. They placed them at his feet, and he cured them. The crowds were amazed when they saw the mute speaking, the deformed made whole, the lame walking, and the blind able to see. And they glorified the God of Israel. Jesus summoned his disciples and said, My heart is moved with pity for the crowd, for they have been with me now for three days, and have nothing to eat. I do not want to send them away hungry, for fear they may collapse on the way. The disciples said to him, where could we ever get enough bread in this deserted place to satisfy such a crowd? Jesus said to them, how many loaves do you have? Seven, they replied, and a few fish. He ordered the crowd to sit down on the ground. Then he took the seven loaves and the fish, gave thanks, broke the loaves, and gave them to the disciples, who in turn gave them to the crowds. They all ate and were satisfied. They picked up the fragments left over, seven baskets full. The Gospel of the Lord. there's any prophet that we will hear from in this season of Advent, it'll be Isaiah, one of the great prophets of the Old Testament. 
Prophets are certainly men of God. They are visionaries, not by their own power, but gifted with a vision that comes completely from God. And certainly Isaiah lives up to that task in providing a vision, a promise of better things to come. And as we read these prophetic words of Isaiah this morning, two things really come out of the page here that really sort of shake up the status quo of Old Testament thinking. And the first one is all peoples. Remember that for the most part, a lot of Old Testament thinking is about God's chosen people, his elect, the Jewish people. And yet that's not God's vision. The vision of God is that his salvation, his mercy is for all peoples. And so Isaiah is sort of saying some shocking words here when he gives this wonderful vision of the future in which all peoples will come to the Lord of hosts, to the mountain of God. And it is there that God will soothe in a compassionate way in his tender love and his mercy. But the second thing that also pops up in there too is he will destroy death forever. We already see a very loud hint of life after death. Remember that in Old Testament thinking, for the most part, in the Jewish mind, once you die, that's it. There is no real life afterwards except this mysterious underworld place. But Isaiah, once again, inspired by God, is saying that there is more to life than just this world and what we see, we who walk in the darkness. And so it's so beautiful what Isaiah is promising. And of course, all the promises of the Old Testament are leading to the Christ. And then we turn to that wonderful gospel where Jesus, who is God in person, in this world, in the flesh, he indeed is the mercy of God. He is compassion. Jesus' heart is moved with great compassion for the people. They have come out into the desert to encounter Christ, but he is worried about them. He's concerned about them. He says we must now nourish them. And of course, our Lord is speaking not only in physical or earthly terms, he's speaking as God to all of us, we who have come into the desert after our own baptism to be purified, to be enlightened, to be turning to God with all our hearts, minds, and souls, our entire being. And our Lord is there. We encounter him in that desert. And it is there that he will feed us and nourish us with his very life. And so we have much to look forward to. We must not allow our cares and worries of this time to overwhelm us. They will always be there in this life, yes. That's part of the desert journey, sometimes a lonely journey. But it's a journey that leads us ultimately to Jesus who sits down in our midst, who teaches us, and we place our cares and worries at his feet as they brought to Jesus all their needs and placed them at his feet. May we do the same, and then he will nourish us with his very life, the bread of eternal life, his very self. With confidence, let us place our Advent petitions before God. For our Holy Father and all church leaders, may the Holy Spirit guide them in their efforts to preach the gospel to the ends of the earth. Let us pray to the Lord. For world leaders, may they work toward justice and peace for their people. Let us pray to the Lord. For those who live in war-torn countries or who have been forced out of their homeland, may they find safety and peace. Let us pray to the Lord. 
for the sick and suffering in our community. May the Lord heal them and walk them with them on their journey. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for the intention of our Mass this morning for all the living and deceased members of the Nyland family. Let us pray to the Lord. We pray for all who have died. May they be granted eternal peace, and may those left behind be consoled. And especially let us remember in this Mass today the priest of our diocese who died on this day, Father Alphonse Wagner in 1974. Let us pray to the Lord. Heavenly Father, we ask that you hear and answer these prayers. We ask this through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. 